Welcome to The Crafty View. I'm Diane Williams, the host for the show, and the show is produced on behalf of the Craftsman's Guild of Mississippi. Today, I'm on site, and I'm at Pick and Pour Pottery. The, this um, studio business was started in 1973. It's been around a long time. It's been in Madison since there was only one street light in Madison. I know because I'm, I've lived in Madison. So they've been around since this was all country road leading to almost nowhere. But anyway, now they're on the thoroughfare in Madison and the proprietor is Robert Pickenpaw and this is a family run business. Hello, Robert. Hey, how you doing? Welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a potter for a very, very long time. You're a yeah. ceramic artist. And this is a family-run business now, Correct. isn't it? Me and my wife started it. Uh huh. Mary, Mary Pick and Paul. Uh-huh. Okay, now Mary's a teacher as well. She was a teacher then. I think she taught your child. She taught my child, and he's uh, a yeah. genius now, yes, because yeah. of Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not a genius. I married her, but she's a wonderful girl. And she's the better half. <laughs> so you and her started this together, and this is an incredibly organized studio, by right, the way. Right, right. See how organized it is. I mean, everything has its place. Everything's coming together, and even during the pandemic, you're doing some things, aren't you? Yeah, we've we've been making bird feeders, bird baths, making more ceramic flowers. We'll we'll be unloading the kill in just a minute. I hadn't even looked in it myself, and uh, so I've uh, been making mushrooms and stuff like that. And the great thing about this room, this is a pre-Civil War church that sat on the Natchez Trace, and a woodworker had it. And it was the church, it started out, it was moved up here from uh, Ridgeland to Madison, and it was the uh, church over here in Madison, this, this particular room. And then a woodworker, like I said, moved it over here and he did his woodworking. And then he built these other two rooms over there, which is the gallery, and that's where he did his furniture stripping. And then his house burned down, and he went that way right there through that door and built a house and every time he had a baby he just added on a room so there are no hallways in our house it's just a perfect setup for a potter who likes to be messy <laughs> okay not only is this a family business but this has been an instructional facility as well i interviewed recently one of your students and i, I don't know if i want to call him your former student because he was talking about coming back and getting some more instructions from you. Brian uh, Newman. Newman, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I taught him. And he's doing incredible work now, by the way. Yeah, I promised his mother came up here and said, make sure he does his pottery. His mother was sick at the time, and I promised her, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And, and one of your signature pieces, I don't see any around the room. I own a couple of them. They're long-stemmed uh, ceramic flowers. Yeah, we're going over to the keel. Okay. And we're fixing to open it up. And uh, Mark Wall here is going to help me with the shelf. I've been, I pulled my back. Cut, follow us over here. And uh, see Mark's going to go ahead and lift up the lid. So you have two kilns. I'll oh, have, here they no, are. Have one, two, three, four, five. We have five kilns. All right, we, I have not even looked at that. These are mushrooms that we uh, did, and uh, we're fixing to unload this, and Mark's gonna put them over there on that table this time, or uh, right here for now. And no. we're gonna lift a shelf out so you can see how a keel is loaded. This is an electric keel. Uh, my signature work years ago was, I always used a gas keel, reduction stoneware. This is oxidation. Oxidation or uh -huh. reverse oxidation? I've heard of reverse oxidation. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But this is the first one we've looked looked at. And uh, 
the, the flowers came from a craftsman guild. She was a uh, charter member like me. Her name was Helen Bryant. And she told me, she used to make little flowers. She took a liking to me. And she um, told me, never make these flowers until I die. Well, she got up to 97 and she moved that way. So I thought, well, now I can go ahead and make some. And, uh, but I promised her I would never make any until she passed away. And so this is from Helen Bryant. As I said, she was a charter member of the Craftsman Skill, the Mississippi Craftsman Skill. I'm gonna get Mark to unload that, that shelf for us here. Cause like I said, I pulled my back and it's best not to live for a while. Oh, so there's rows and rows of things. Yeah, that's in what there. I want y'all to see. We, we, we don't have to see the whole thing. I, these are all mushrooms, but the flowers are down and down. Like here's one, a, a baby one, you know, a little sunflower, like that. But if you want to see more, we can let you see more. And underneath there, there should be some flowers if you want to. But we got, we got plenty out there we can show. We're gluing them up now on the rods, like you were saying. What are these? These are stilts, and that gives you the height. See, this has got to go underneath there. I like see. Like that, see? And you need a little uh, distance in there, you know, for air and stuff can get in there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Let me walk right by you here. You just be still. It's like a woman's kitchen. Just be still. <laughs> Let's get these out as quick as we can. And so y'all can see uh, how the flowers are loaded. How did you learn to do this craft? Uh, I took it as an easy, my journalism teacher signed me up. I followed him from Hines Junior College to Delta State. I was a photographer. I was training to be a uh, fashion or medical photographer. And I worked at the university and I worked at the VA in the medical photography department. And uh, it was a very interesting time uh, in Mississippi's history. Let me get that one out. Uh, it's when they brought the three civil rights workers in uh, from Philadelphia, and I happened to be there. Church, uh, Werner, Cheney, and Goodman. I, yeah, I could, mm -hmm. I could I, 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 you know, and uh, <coughs> people. From, from Matt Life magazine all over the United States, you know. And uh, I found out more about those people because I talked to the uh, uh, guy that had the, uh, did the autopsies and things at lunch. Here are the flowers. I didn't mean to get off on that, but uh, see, here are the flowers. You have all different kinds. See? I think you got a customer named Janie here. Does she go outside? Yeah, well, I really wanted her to see these. Okay. Well, Mark yeah. will go get her. I'll go get her. All right. So here, the, here they are. They're gorgeous. Well, thank you. The colors. How long did it take you to master the colors in these flowers? Well, a long, not, uh, not too long. Uh, I had gotten my master's the fine mm -hmm. arts at Ole Miss. And, uh, I was doing pottery and of course uh, back then you know you had everything had to be earthy and stuff and that's why you were trained and I wouldn't listen to my mama she said you got to have color boy <laughs> and I started putting more color in them and that's when people started liking them more and more and more and uh, they're fun they, I, they bring happiness in people's lives and uh, they really do. I have a few sitting out in front of my door, and people love to walk by and look at them. And the yeah. light reflects on them as well. Yeah. Well, you know, during the winter when it's, you have a, you know, dull day, and you look out there and you see color. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend, she has some down in, uh, up in Michigan, and she has them on the stems. And, you know, Michigan, the snow gets this high. And she said that when the snow melts, it's so interesting to watch the snow melt and the first thing pops out are these flowers. Oh, uh, the wow. Ground, the white background. And that, that would be real cool to see. Do you like those? Mm -hmm. Well, we're just getting them out. We're They're gonna, warm. We're going, well, we just, we're going to fix another load. We're going to have an, uh, 
opening the 21st and all these will be ready to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to reopen the, the 21st. The, uh -huh. the studio the is closed have, right yeah. now. The reason I have to close is that my daughter was here helping me and she has the Pick and Paw Pottery in Livingston, Montana. And my other daughter has just moved to New Orleans and she's going to get her master's degree in pottery and she taught pottery in San Francisco. And uh, there's the virus. There's the reason we had to close because everybody wants to get in their yard, you know. And so, uh, what, so what we just, I, it's just me left here and my wife and I just, you know, waiting on customers and all that. I, and I love them, but I have to close so I can make work. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have. It's a I'm good not problem complaining. Now. Yes. Now yes. the other things that have just come out of the kill, the gas kill, are out front, mm -hmm. and we can take you out there. We're gluing them up, and they are the uh, bird feeders and the bird baths. Okay, let's take some time to go out there and take a look at those. Okay. All right. This is uh, the uh, this is what the uh, bird feeders and the bird baths look like. And these have uh, been bis fired. See here the sound? That means you fire them the first time and then you paint them, glaze them with the glaze and you uh, fire them. But these, I uh, just glued these up yesterday, are the same thing, but they've been stained. These are stained. These are more earth looking colors. Oh, man. See yeah. the design? And this is a small, small, if I can get it down on the ground here, they can't. This is a small bird bath. You know, a lot of people like have little houses and things and they just want something small. They could also use that as a bird feeder. Now this one here is also a different type of stain. And this is fired, in, like I said, in the gas kill. And the reduction, that means you starve the kill of the oxygen. See, that could be, I, I forgot, but that could be the stain, same stain but depends on where it's located in the kill, makes it unique. Really? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and see, this is on this particular kill, which I can show you, was at the bottom, and the top got more reduction. So How did you get the design in there? Lace and stuff like that. Just oh, yeah, lace. I gave you a piece of lace. You yeah, remember? You yeah, yeah, I remember. If you need more, let me know. I do. I need more right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, and here it will make you one free. Now see how this one does? Now this one is a row of stamp that I made and you roll it in there. And I wish you knew where the other one was, the little stamp, but that see, this has the holes in it and this is a bird feeder, you know. And I had a lady come up today, she said, they're, they're just, she loves them because they're small, you know. And the squirrels are going to get into anything. I don't care what you do. Just now, this one turned out real dark. See? But you notice this stain has a little green tint to it. And oh. that was chrome oxide, see, that I was using. And uh, the, little, the little gas kill, my daughter fired it all the time. And she's not here. Uh, so I'm not trying to relearn it. Mm. Now this is another road stamp. And this is uh, the center piece of a um, flower I made, a sunflower. Yes. And it blew up. So you just still use that as a texture, see. I love the crimping there. Yeah, on each yeah, side. yeah. See. It's very signature, you know. Yeah. And look under here, underneath. Yeah, see. Fabulous. They're, they're, they are interesting, and uh, I used to make these, and I'm coming back and making them. You know, I've been here 48 years, mm -hmm. and so you, you get to see all these changes, and you get to see things just recycle themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess I've seen it about three or four times. You know, people want bows, and then they want this. Everybody wants to be outside now. Okay. And so we're, we're, we're make, starting to make the wind chimes again. See. Is that what this is? No, that's just a piece I made. It cracked here, so I just kept it. You know, see a dirt dauber's nest kind of got on top of it. And uh, stay right there a second while you look at this. I'm going to show you something. Yeah, he made this. 
incredible. Awesome. Love that. You said thing. it's not a wet wind chime, but it no, almost sure is. Do. Another thing, I was telling you about Helen Bright and the flowers. This is what she did in the 50s. See, these are dirt daubers' nests. And you can put them in the kill and fire them. And what they did, the potters did back then, is that they would get an old piece of wood. These are not pretty ones. And uh, glue it on there, and then you could put a little flower arrangements. You have oh. a little board. And I'm thinking about going back and doing that again. Would you add glaze to it? You can. You can. I supply the clay and the uh, walls. I mean, the dirt dauber supply the labor. Wow. <laughs> but this is what we're doing here. Now, over here, we're gluing up these flowers. We're trying to get them ready for the open house. You just have to excuse the junk. I'm a junky person. And uh, this is a, a different one that we did different. So this See. is what they look like on the stem. Uh-huh. Basically, not, not all the way. This is pretty much the same glaze. So it's about two and a half feet tall? Well, the thing of it, though, this is a uh, three foot. Three foot. But what we did on this one, we put a different type of on go, a different color clay underneath of it, and put this red on top of it, and you see what color comes out. Yeah. So it's absolutely fascinating. I it will is. die not doing everything I want to do. It's just so fascinating. Oh my gosh. And I had a young man, he went to school with my daughter, came the other day, he's in his 40s, and he said, will you teach me pottery? I want to come up here and just be around you for a week. And uh, he find, I asked him, I said, how does it make you feel? That was the first question I asked him. He said, well, he started talking about that inner self that, that comes out when you start that creativity. And that's what I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. I can teach him. He's ready. He's ready. He is ready. And so uh, I may, I may, I'm going to try to work a schedule out when he comes up. Now, here are the, here's the most popular flower. Of course, it's always the sunflower. See, sunflower is always the most popular, and uh, it's the hardest one and the most time. It's not hard; it's the most time-consuming one of all. See, yes. Give you an idea. They're all different. It's this one here. See, see how it differs. Let me get the other one down so y'all can see. Let me get it so you can get a little more light on. See, every one of them's different. Oh, yes. Every one of them. They're all handmade. They're no two alike. Yes. See. All right. All right. Those are very popular items when you do shows and things. Oh, yeah. 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 And they look so good on your ex exhibition, on your display. Well, it brings color. Like my mother, mm -hmm. I wouldn't listen to my mama. And they finally did, and she said, people want color. Stop all that other stuff for a while, and I'll still do the other stuff. I can hear your mama <laughs> saying that. We need to listen to our mamas. Yeah, we So did. this is a kiln room over here. Yeah, then here is where the big kill is. This is where the gas kill is. Ooh, look at this place. Again, excuse the jump. And we just rebuilt this kill about a year ago. It was about a year ago, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. About a year, year, a and, year and a half. A year and a half. I had a kill that came all the way out here. It was on wheels. And it was a 100 cubic foot. It's just too big for me. I've gotten old, you know. So uh, right now I'm using the kill <laughs> in here to dry these little flowers. Mm -hmm. But this is how you brick it up right here. You hand brick it up like this, and you, all this is full of pottery all the way to the top. And of course the gas burners are here. Those are the first gas burners I ever made 48 years ago. And then I just took a blower and put behind them and I'm still using today. The two you got fire side. extinguishers in here? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Actually people think, you know, think a kill, it scares them. Actually this kill is probably safer 
than probably your, almost as much as your oven. Not, not quite, mm -hmm. but it is so well insulated. And speak of insulation, if you can see this here, this is the uh, sponge brick or the insulation brick. So we put the insulation brick on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then we put the hard brick uh, on the outside. But this right here came from the space program. The space program has really helped ceramics. And that is the insulation that was behind. Remember when the old heat shield would burn up as it, the astronaut came in? That would burn up. This is what's behind it. Oh. And you can take this insulation, say if you added about that much more, you got you a garbage can, a metal garbage can, lined it, lined it with this, put your burn in the bottom, and put it, line the top, and it, it'll be like, you know, a couple thousand degrees, whatever this temperature will go to, and it'll be like 600 on the outside. Mm -hmm. So the space program is really, I really wish they'd get it going more. <laughs> Tell it's me a, how you get these stems. We go buy the steel ourselves and we cut it ourselves. These are still very wet. See, there's a little flower. Mm -hmm. And we bring, go buy them in 20 foot lengths. And then we come back and cut them. And we don't know where everything's going to go because steel has gone up $2 a rod. Which really? Which is a big jump. Which is? Yeah. You know, it hurts everybody. Yeah, because your flowers right now are at the point of being affordable. Right. And then when the price goes up like that. You have that, to go up. I'm sorry to say that. But it's just the way things work. And I imagine that's hard when you're planning for Chimneyville, the end of the year show and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. We start making flowers like in, again, in, uh, see, I have to quit for a while because your hands, you know, you get off the right of some things like that. And we start like in September, October making flowers. Mm -hmm. And we don't quit until after May. But this year, because of the virus, which I, you know, I'm sorry to say it helped my business. I'm sorry to say people had to die. But anyway, I've had to go all the way past May. I'm into July still making flowers. Normally okay. I quit in May <clears throat> and start making pottery. Okay. But things have changed. Yeah. Let's take a look at the next phase and you're putting it back in its original source. See, the thousands and thousands and thousands of years it took to become part. All right, thanks a lot. See, so that, that's what makes it so fascinating. Like these pots here will outlive me for sure. And it depends on like those uh, ones I was showing you out there, the bird feeders, they're fired higher They'll probably be here if you never break them 10, 20,000, maybe 30,000 years because I fired them higher and I condensed them more. If you took this one that has just been bisfired, it'll probably last you know, a very, very long time, maybe, you know, maybe 5,000 years, but it's very porous. And see, the, and when it's this porous, water can get in it, seep in it, and you know, deteriorates it. Whereas those other bird feeders that I showed you earlier, they are uh, fired, you know, very high, and it's very not not porous at all. I don't explain it correctly because you know I'm LED and all that stuff. But anyway, LED, you're a light. You are a light. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but this is what it looks like. These look like this color, and the clay I use, I we mix it ourselves. We do everything here. We mix it ourselves. We do use some commercial glazes. My wife and them like to use some. I don't want to use them. I still want to mix my own. And then we take it, and then this is a stain that we put on here. Now, you notice the stain in there kind of helps show up the lines. And this is a red iron oxide stain, same iron that's in your blood. Then, after we stain it, we wiped it. And you have to wipe it first because it gets the air out of the porous part of the clay. And if you don't wipe it with a light sponge and water, it will let, uh, make, can make pinholes, see. And so the water goes in and fills up the air, it gets the air out, you know, fills in the little pinholes. And then we take, uh, I, I particularly like, I put a, uh, like a primer col color on here. And depending on the color I put here, this particular one is white, it helps determine the colors of the uh, pottery. 
Now this is what it looks like. I got Kathy uh, to glaze this one yesterday. This is one I glazed. And painting them is real interesting. You have to learn to go within when you make it, and you have to learn to go within when you paint. And most people think you, you paint it. They think you're painting by numbers. You don't. You have to be free. You've got to let your soul spirit out into it. And if you don't, it, it takes away the love that you're trying to put in your work, just like a writer, a dancer, just all people in the creative field are like that. But this is what it looks like. And then you fire them, and look, see? My glazing is more of a blending. I don't like just this and that, and that, you know. But see how you got the blue, you got the yellow, and you got the green there, see? And like that, see? This is the red. And depending on what's underneath that glaze will also uh, change it. And that just takes practice. Just think of your grandmother's cooking. She just knew how to do it. You know, and she felt it. She felt her work. And now we're gonna walk over here and we're gonna try glazing. It's hard to kind of get into your feelings when you're being filmed, but we will give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you have to, the hardest part is deciding, you know, what I, what I want to show in this. Okay, let's say I'm gonna take this color. Now, these are little test tiles. They're by each color. Now, this is this color right here. And the interesting thing about this, when you make this, they don't, a, lot of that, a lot of this is not taught in school, you know, but this is two coats. That part is one coat. And this is what the glaze looks like standing up, like on a pot. But also, this is what the glaze looks like laying down. See, the glaze has a tendency to puddle a little bit. And see, when it gets on thicker, it will change the colors. So here we go, we're gonna paint this. This is a big seeker, so watch close. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this way. See, there's like a little imprint I made in there uh, with a stamp. And I just take it like this and just dab it on there. Just feel free, feel free. And I do not use a $100 brush. I use a brush. These are these old bristle brushes you get there at Lowe's and Walmart, and they're like 59 cents each. They're the best brushes. Why? Why? Because they start tearing up. See that? It's not like painting a house where you want it nice and smooth. They start tearing up. And see, look, you can see, look at those little lines. You, you can get right into the groove. Right into it. Just let it go. See, just like you're exactly right. See? All right. Now, let's say now, what, what colors do I want around this, say, to contrast with it? Well, I, right now, I've just set myself up on the yellows and oranges. I do like the blues also. And maybe we can work that blue in somehow. All right, let's go. This is a lemon yellow. This, and this is a, a yellow yellow. And every time you mix them, they seem to change a little bit because when you get your colors, uh, your pigments from other companies and things like that, you get from one company, it may be a little different. It may have been mine. Now watch, I just kind of, just let that go on there like that. See, I hope this helps a lot of people that paint. My glazers, like I say, are loose. Uh, most people want like, I want my name in there and that you're like this and yeah, you know, it's no fun, you know? <laughs> so you go like this, <laughs> you're right. Now look, see how I kind of just did that? Now, what have I, how many colors I have on here? Two. Four. I've got this color. I've got the red. I got the yellow and I got the yellow over the red, yeah. which is going to make the fourth color. I've already got four colors on that, see? And I could quit if, if that's what I wanted. But let's see, what could I do? <coughs> that's kind of a lemon. Let's try, you know, I have a friend, he loves orange, and he's the one that got me in this orange here. And I mix these glazes myself. Uh, some of them, uh, all these are the same base. No, this one's not. And they're different bases of glazes. 
So let's just let's just take this look. Just just do a little touch of orange. Let's see what's gonna happen. Do I know what's gonna happen? No. But the way you tell if you've done good or not, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, is how you feel, how it feels to you. And you go, oh, doggone it, I, I, I didn't mean to do that. You know, it's just like cooking. You know, like your grandma would make you the biscuits and if the dough felt right, she kind of knew, you know, it was going to be that way. Now, I wonder if we could do something different with this one. Let's try a blue outline see now do i need to go dark or light now this one is kind of a light we call it kind of like a baby blue see so like that and we're going to take this and wipe it off this is a little thick so i've got to watch what i do here then i can do it like this see now and my painting see most people will just sit here and paint it one solid color all the way around. If you notice, I'm leaving, letting this white burn through. Oh. And what they will do, these colors will actually fight each other on who is the most, has, has the most color, has the most pigment, and who's gonna be the dominant. And so there's so like a growing process uh, uh, in, in the glazing itself. And depending on how you fire, these particular glazes are, are designed to go into the electric kill. Can you put them in the gas kill? Yes, but it, it does change them a lot, a lot. The gas kill is more uh, mats and more blunt and more earthy type feeling. And that seems to be coming back. Will you go get that one pot with the top on it? You know what I'm talking about? You know, the red top with the red top for me. And I then, love this because me, an artist does uh, their work, you. music, the or whatever, with pot. their emotions. Right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to bring one around and I'm going to show good, you. Is it? All right, now see, am I through or am I not? I'll sit here and think about it. A third thing I can do is stain. I could go in here and put you know, little lines and stuff like that, see if I want to. Or I could make a stain come in here. I can take like a, a copper black oxide stain and I can touch it in there and it'll make a green look. See, I could put some green in here. Just What's uh, your heart saying? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I'm gonna have to put it down. I've got to put it down because I, I'm gonna show you the difference. This is a somewhere pot. This happens to be a crematory pot. And what is, it is fascinating, see, like that. This one blew up. This may be mine. I may just put some silicon rubber in there and <laughs> just do it. But anyway, what we do, we have done this before, and I don't want a lot of people calling me wanting a crematory pot. I can't make them that fast. And I'm gonna see if I can remake them. But this is a, a one, a girl wanted this on here, and she said that stood for eternity. So I put that particular design on there. This is for her husband. And see, it's more earth, you know. Uh, and, and people love to see more earthy colors, like in crematory pots. And the great thing about it, uh, when I make it, I usually call the person and still wet. They can write a special message right in there that only her and I and the ashes know what's in there, you know, like that. And so, uh, what was I going to say about it? Uh, we're about we're out of time? Okay. Uh, what we've done for people, and again, I don't need a bunch of phone calls. Uh, if they want me to take two tablespoons of the ashes, I will make it into a glaze. And I can take you in there and show you a pot and I can glaze you on the pot, see? And it, it, it gets, I mean, you really, I mean, the hair stands up in the back of your, you know how you get every, on the, everywhere, because you're very sacred. It's a very sacred thing you're doing. You can, you don't want to mess up, but yet you want to still, see, I'm getting goosebumps right now. You want it to feel, you know, you want it to feel the pot. And uh, I used to make a bunch of smaller ones for pets, 
you know, yeah. people love to do the pets. I have one for my pets. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking about going doing it. You could just create, I, I'm, this is for potters out there, you could just create a whole business for the rest of your life. Well, just making creamy toy pots. Well, I have a question. Yes. You talked about taking a tablespoon or a couple of tablespoons. Suppose someone wanted to take the entire ashes and create and put it in to the creation of an item you can actually <clears throat> you could actually do that yes i'd have to sit down and think about it a little more you could make something and just glaze the whole thing see this is part of the problem with it and you could actually take the ashes and wedge it into the clay itself and you'd have to test it now what do you do with that test you don't just throw it away you know, because it's, it's got some human remains that were in there. And you can make an ash glaze, and you can put the ashes in the glaze. Depending, it's, it's, mainly, the, it's mainly bones and things. It's, it's a calcium more thing. And it, 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 it just depends. You know, I don't know. I so you have to under, understand the science of it. And then I'm wondering, like, a person that was really overweight, has more ashes uh -huh. than a smaller person. Yes, you gotta make so, a bigger pot. Yes. This is so very interesting. I'm already wanting an entire pot made of my mama's <laughs> ashes. Well, this lady came in and I sold her one. They were for someone else and I said, but you know. And so she got in, she came back and says, now you're gonna make mine, aren't you? And I said, wait a minute, <laughs> you're gonna have to let me know. Her daddy did not like the ones that, that were being proposed to him. He wanted something earth, earth. You see, this uh, we we do put Mississippi clay in our pots. We yeah. have Mississippi clay. It comes from sledge. You know, it's not all Mississippi clay. It's just some in there, so we can say it's Mississippi clay. And uh, we're hoping this guy has found this blue clay. You know how the blue clay in Mississippi? And one of the things we're thinking about working on, if he'll bring it to me is he says, y'all have a need for this. Says, I don't need a ton. I just need five gallons to test. And we're thinking about making a Mississippi blue glazed flower called the Mississippi blue. And we're going to see if the blue will come through. See, and he said that all this clay he had out there, a lot of the blue has washed out of it. It's probably some kind of a cobalt or something. It could be even a, some kind of manganese or something. But that, that colorant that's in the clay will make the color for the glaze, see? Oh, and wow. this is one of the things I'm thinking about doing. Now, I may not get it done. You know, this is one of these ideas. You know how artists all we get these, whoa, oh, you know, and <laughs> it never gets done. But it can be done. <coughs> so if this guy, he drills wells and stuff. He's a driller. Okay. And if, he, if I can get in with him, and wonder if he finds a source over here that's green. Bring me some of that. Yeah. And I'll screen it and I'll make it. And they say, oh man, this is this is from Mississippi. This is the Mississippi clay deposits, you know. Uh, see, that's what's so exciting about this. What other mixed media do you use in your art? Do I use my art? I used to put photographs on pottery. That's what I did my thesis on. And it was going to be, it was 73, it was going to be a hot item. I, you know, you could do family portraits and make a pot, and there's your whole family in, on this pot. And then all of a sudden, silk screen came out on pottery. And that just took it away. I was so mad. I'd done my thesis on it. I wasn't mad. But anyway, because uh, I was a photographer. I was, you know, I was going to either be fashion or a medical, you know, one or the other. And, uh, but uh, that was a uh, great idea that didn't, you know, it just okay. didn't, didn't Okay, make you got to try things. I want to ask you about something that is going to be very unexpected. It doesn't relate to the actual craft, but it relates to you as a craftsperson. Right. And it was a number of years ago, at least 10. Picture this. Okay. You're at the Craftsman's Guild. <laughs> he knows where I'm going with this. I think you had on a trench coat. You came down the stairs, and, and, and the, the event was to celebrate 
I believe wearable craft or something. Expose your craft. It, it, yeah, expose what, your craft. And it was left up to the crass person to decide <laughs> how to do it. Let's talk about that a moment. Well, if Mark will go over there and get that calendar off the wall. Oh, yeah, it was a calendar that was mm -hmm. created. It was a calendar, maybe. What happened, it, uh, it was expose your craft. And so you have to really start thinking about it. How you how are you going to do this, you know? And so I chose the flowers. It was 2012 was the year. And uh, so we all had, had these trench coats on. And what we did is we came down the stairs exposing our craft. So I had a trench coat on, and my daughter had bought me some underwear uh, from, she worked at Yellowstone, and on the underwear, on the back of it was a fish, and it had a ruler underneath of it, and underneath that it says, it says, size matters, okay? And so I had on that underwear, and I had that flower, and I came down the steps holding that flower in front of me, and then I turned, I took the trench coat off, and then I turned around and showed my booty, and there was that underwear with the fish, and, the, and then I had these buffalo horns on top of my head I got from my daughter. She works at Yellowstone, there are a lot of buffaloes out there. And so that was me. And so each artist had to decide how they were gonna do it. So then <coughs> what we did, we took the flower, and it was that particular flower you saw on the calendar, that we uh, bid it off, and I donated the money to the Craftsman's Guild, so. That was fabulous, I was there. Oh, you were there? <laughs> I was there. And I'm like a child. I was like, O-M-G. <laughs> but you know, when you're a real craftsman uh -huh. and a master craftsman, you'll do a lot of things that will draw attention to this important aspect of our life that dates back to our you know, for generations and generations to the mm -hmm. beginning mm -hmm. of time. And that's what's important. Yeah, yeah. It, the important is to bring the spirit out of yourself. And that young man that I was, you know, may teach, I don't know. And uh, you have to, everybody thinks happiness and everything is out there in the, the material world. And it's not. See, I'm kind of a spiritualist. And I'm a bit, I, I believe in God, very much so. In fact, being more of a spiritualist, I am closer to God than what religion could take me to. Nothing against religion because it helped me a lot. I think religion and science and society is just a stepping stone. And you don't stop there. You go on out. You're going out almost to the cosmic consciousness of the oneness of all. And that cosmic consciousness is in each and every one of us. And it's so sad. I have so many people call wanting to get their children classes. And because of the virus and stuff, and I, I've gotten so much junk, I like to have a place, you know, and the city, I may still be working with the city on that. You know, they tore two lane down. And I don't know yet. And uh, to keep that alive in yourself, even as a person my age, I'm 77, keep it alive. Don't let it die in you. You know, if you're a gardener, like you kind of are, keep that alive. Keep that spirit alive in you. Don't let, don't let God die in you. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. And we have, you know, we do, we make mistakes and the whole bit like that. But that is so important today. And it's today's science, especially in these children. I tell them, some ma'am, I can't teach the child, but do whatever you can. To keep that alive in that child. Yes. Don't let that die, you know, in that child because that is going to be needed. The creativity part mm -hmm. is going to be needed for mankind. Mm -hmm. and that's where we get our creativity from the Creator. That's right. Mm -hmm. Robert, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, do you have a social media, website, email? Website. My daughter runs it. It's pickandpowerpottery.com. Okay. Is that it, Mark? Yeah, but uh, Facebook too. Facebook. On Just Facebook. Pickle Pottery Facebook. 
pick him for a pottery on com, Facebook. I think, Facebook. Uh huh. And she, uh, she's been calling me from Montana. Okay. You know, I said, when are you going to get those flowers out? I have these questions. I said, look, this you is just a mom and pop store. And it, when I die, it's going to be a mom and pop store. And when you want it, you can turn it into anything you want. Right. But so, right now, I, if, I t if I went like, ah, money and all this stuff, mm -hmm. I didn't do it that way. I went, I want to enjoy it. And I still do. I would like to have some more money. No doubt about it. But, yeah. And you're a master craftsman, oh, a fellow in the Craftsman's it. Guild. I'm just having fun. And before we close, I know when we went outside, we saw that wonderful vehicle out there <laughs> tell us about that vehicle and then we're going to call it a day do you want the owner to tell you or me to tell who's you? the owner mr mark wall right there mark tell Interview us that boy real quickly tell us about that vehicle outside it's a 1937 chevrolet pickup truck when i bought it it was an all original perfectly restored antique truck. I won many awards as an antique truck, but then I turned it into a street ride. It's got a LS motor and automatic transmission. It's got uh, a custom made chassis. It's got the old body on it, custom interior. Uh, the bedwood in the back is Peruvian walnut. The interior was done by a man named Paul Atkins who does lots of uh, Riddler award winner cars. That particular truck won top 100 hot rods in the country in 2018 for Street Rider Magazine. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you. <coughs> and have a good day. And you've got a new customer right here, Janie Albright. <coughs> good. And Janie is here from Tennessee. She lives dual states, Mississippi and Tennessee. And Monica. she works with the Miss Tennessee pageant. Her husband, Joe Albright, is the CEO of Miss Tennessee. And you are in full fashion right now with the work you're doing with that organization. Is that correct? That's correct. With scholarships for young women. Thank you so very much. Love y'all. Love you. Love yourself. That's important. Mm -hmm.